Hyped happy hour. We are here on a beautiful Friday morning. I am Gentle Tornado. I am your host on this magical journey. I created a company called Live Hyped. Hyped is an acronym that stands for happiness, inspiration, positivity, enthusiasm, and dreams. If you look in the bottom left, my logo is an H with a heartbeat in the middle because we never know how many heartbeats we have. So here at Hyped, we're on an absolute mission to make every single moment count, make positivity louder, and bridge the gap between Web3, personal life, and just extraordinary people. I am joined today on episode 38 with fucking someone that's Super motivating, an absolute killer, mo- motivator, legend, genuine, humble, Luca Nets. How are you? I'm doing good, dude. And I didn't know that about, uh, I love that little uh, excerpt from the beginning. I appreciated that. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, man. So we started off with what we're grateful for today. So what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for being alive, just being able to breathe and be healthy and not, you know, life is interesting, you know? Something, <laughs> something can happen. I think I, I, I've, I've been uh, actually a bearer of bad news a couple times where, you know, life will deal, deal you a card and whatever your problems were, you know, the day before are not your problems, you know, today. And so grateful to have the same problems I did yesterday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No new problems. So I think if you wake up, man, and like the five to 10 people that you love the most are alive, like, I mean, you're just ready to just crush the day. And uh, so we get straight into it. So uh, what I want you to do is give me like a two to five minute, like who's Luca Nets? Tell me about how you grew up, how you got here, you know, what you've done. Give the audience, you know, the whole Luca Nets story. Yeah. Um, the two minute version is uh, I grew up homeless with my mom for, and my brother for nine years, uh, bouncing around house to house, state to state, country to country. Uh, settled down in Los Angeles, went to Fairfax High. Where I went to a couple high schools, but I ended uh, my tenure at Fairfax High School. Did that uh, until I think sophomore year. Uh, tested out of school. I tell people I dropped out. Tested out, same thing. Um, left school early. Got a job at a company called Ring Doorbell. Did that for about two years. Learned a lot. Uh, I think my experience there gave me the desire to want to build a big company. And then I started my first direct consumer brand when I was eighteen. Uh, hit it right off the jump, uh, sold that business for quite a bit of money when I was 19, then started um, leaning into influencer marketing and monetizing social influence. I realized that influencers had millions of followers, but they didn't have millions of dollars. So I was like, okay, let me just do what I did uh, for myself, for you guys. And then obviously their following and their likeness kind of amplified that. Uh, in three and a half years, we did just over $250 million in sales. I worked with everyone from, you know, Interscope and Columbia Records to, um, I mean, every every single influencer that you could possibly imagine. I think at one point we were running, you know, 70 different brands at the same time. Um, and then uh, went off and um, got into Gel Blaster. So Gel Blaster, I don't have one near me, uh, but it's a little water Orbeez gun. Um, it's in every Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and Costco nationwide. Won 2021's Toy of the Year. And then I bought Pudgy Penguins about eight months ago. And it's been my full-time thing ever since. Yeah, that's wild. So what is the, j- you said Jail Blaster? Yeah, Jail Blaster. I mean, I can I can go find you one if you want. But I Is it, it's like a, it's like a bubble gun? Yeah, it's. Um, is it that fucking big one that shoots like the. I don't know. You got to describe it. I mean, I got to get one now. I got fucking three kids. Yeah, I would love to send you some. Just send me your address and I'll send you guys some for Christmas. Hopefully you'll get there in time. I probably won't, but. That's right. No, 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 no. That's fine. Uh, No, dude, that's awesome, man. That's a crazy journey. So how did you get, how did you get into Web3? Tell me about that. So I I just love to collect things. 
Yeah. Like my mom makes a joke, like there's no more shelf or wall space in my LA house. In my Miami house, I try not to do the same thing I did there. But like, I just like cool shit. I think just growing up, not ha like every time there was show and tell, like in elementary school, like I had nothing to show and nothing to tell. So I think when I got <laughs> money, I was like, okay, like it's time to make up for all the years of show and tell that I didn't have anything. Uh, so I, that, that was kind of, um, you know, just, just like the, the love for collecting. And that's why I tell people like that this space is so much more than crypto or like some sort of subjective growth market. It's like, it's a very, you know, real industry in the sense that, you know, collecting has been around since the beginning of human history. And it's been something we've like, as humans have always loved. And that's what got me into the space, right? Like I'm somebody who spent millions of dollars on sports cards, millions of dollars in fine art. So I think to myself, like, I'm just going to go spend this money here because I get all of the pros of collecting with none of the cons. And, you know, you know, I wouldn't even know where to start to sell one of my fine art pieces. I just assume that it's probably a sunk cost at this point. It's just something that I like and I enjoy. But, you know, with NFTs, not only can you like and enjoy them, like there's also the opportunity to like turn a profit or realize a loss relatively quicker than you would in the traditional world. It just is quite literally a better way to collect. Like I don't, I can't imagine physical collecting, beating digital collecting over the course of the next next 20 years. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Um, so do you have one like collectible that is your favorite? Do you have a top three? Uh, I have a painting. Uh, I have a couple paintings that are, uh, that like mean a lot to me. A collectible, um, I do, I have, um, I have a Michael Phelps signed um, like Olympic, it's like a one of one signed Olympic card uh, where he won like his eight gold medals. And I, I like, I knew, cause, cause people just think sports cards, they think like, okay, basketball and soccer, like the obvious, but it's actually, if you go to like the non obvious, like super legendary, like Michael Phelps's eight gold medals is super legendary, right? So like yeah. having a one of one, signed Michael Phelps, you know, Olympic eight gold medal card is probably like, might be one of those ones where you just like see me on like an Instagram post, like this guy just sold this for like $8 million, you know? <laughs> no, that's fucking awesome, man. I mean, yeah, one gold medal is absolutely insane. Eight gold medals is, <laughs> is wild. Um, what about your paintings? So tell me a little bit about those paintings. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually this guy named Sage Willows, um, uh, and his like art is like color therapy and I bought it probably during the worst time of my life. And cause it just meant something to me and he had named the paintings. Uh, one of them was, uh, I don't know why I'm blanking on the names, but like the, the names had hit so close. It was like his last two paintings in his studio and they were like, um, they were just like, what I was dealing with at the time, they just like totally alluded to it. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a interesting. And so he has this art style that's like very color therapy-esque, like that's his whole thing. Like you stare into the painting long enough and you'll feel better. And it's like, he's so right. Like I'll, I, I, when I'm in Los Angeles, the paintings are in LA. When I have like a bad day, I'll like make it a note to like stare at the painting for a couple minutes and I'll just feel way better. Yeah. No, that's fucking awesome. I mean, that's super cool that you have something that's so meaningful to you that you can like turn to and get that. Uh, you know, I have like in my, in my workspace, I have just like photos of my family. So when yeah. I'm ever just having like a, just a tough day or a tough time, I just look up there and I just like instantly snap out of it. And I'm like, man, like, what am I upset about? Uh, I got my three little kids and my wife. Um, uh, all right. So listen, we get straight into it. What we do is we go word by word within hyped. So we started off with happiness. But before I get into happiness, I'm going to read you my favorite definition of success. Mm. It's by Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson. So it's success to laugh often and much to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. I love that. What's uh, what's your favorite part? Um, I think all of it was pretty good. No, I think it's uh, 
I think it's an interesting, um, interesting statement that I definitely very much resonate with. How do you feel about success? Yeah, I think um, success is not what most people think it is. I think a lot of people think success is Lamborghinis and big homes and pretty wives or significant others. I think, you know, success can't be measured by things because things can be stolen. You know, we'll take Sam Bankman Freed, for example, right? <laughs> Sam had all of the nice things that the world would provide. But we'll take we'll take a credit card scammer or a drug dealer or a you know fraudster. You know, a lot of these people have all of the nice things. And so default human behavior today is you see somebody in a Lamborghini and you're like, oh my God, I want to be him. I want to be successful. When in reality, your definition of success is skewed because you don't know what that person did to get that Lamborghini. And so success can't be measured by the things that you have because you can quite literally steal the things that you have. Um, you can just buy a doge, you know, a, a coin and forget about it and five years later show up with a wallet with $30 million. Does that mean you're successful? I mean, of course not. Success is measured, um, I think, by how happy you are. Like I know people, the most successful man I ever, I, I know is a middle-class man who lives in Studio City in California. And it's like, why? And it's because he's the happiest person I know. So I think success is measured by how happy you are. You know, a dream of mine growing up was, there's this movie, it's one of my favorite movies in the world, it's called Into the Wild. And it's this guy who just basically drops out of school, I think it was like Harvard, and he just goes and lives in nature. And I was like, I used to envy him so much. And I knew I could never take that route. I just like, I had too many people counting on me to do that. But like part of my core, like I am that person. Like I would, I would love to just disappear into the woods and live in nature for as long as I could possibly survive. And so I think there's just something to be said about like, are you happy? And like, what does happiness mean to you? And do you wake up every day loving your life? Do you wake up every day having a purpose? And if you wake up every day having a purpose and you wake up every day being happy, then you are just as successful as any billionaire on the planet. And I think a lot of people just misconstrue what I think success is. I think too many people look at success as things. And I did for the longest as well until you realize that once you get those things, they don't make you happy. Um, and one of the most depressing days of my life was getting, um, was buying this like really expensive car that I wanted for a long time. I was like, wow, this sucks. Uh, and I've, I've had many situations like that in my life, but success can't be measured by the things you have, because if not, you'll just be a slave to things. And success is really about freedom and happiness. And so what does freedom and happiness mean to you? If you wake up, if you wake up every day and you work in a ski resort and you man the gondola and you're happy every day you do it uh, and you feel like that's your purpose and you feel free, um, then you're successful. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that, man. I think, uh, yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. That was absolutely incredible. And I think it just, it's kind of like the embodiment too of Web3, like these communities, right? And the penguins are for sure up there of like, the community is so strong, man. And it's like, like I've known Joey Moose for fuck a, a while now. And like the the moments that we've created in spaces alone, make me some of the most happy moments in my life. And I think like those types of things, right. It's, it's such a, a good thing to look forward to in, in that level of success. So um, I love what you said. That was, that was incredible. So the first question under happiness is what makes you happy every single day? Um, it's an interesting one. Um, I think there's there's certain like my 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 animals right I love animals so my animals make me happy every single day I think my purpose makes me happy every single day I love waking up every morning knowing that I'm trying to build something big that helps people like that I think after ten seconds of thought I think that's what really <laughs> makes me happy I think the most the, when I get depressed is when I feel like I'm caught in the rat race that everyone else is caught in, which is like make more money. I think the money race is like such a depressing one. I think you can only really realize it until you get it. And then once you get it, you just realize, oh man, this is just like incredibly disappointing. Um, but I think just waking up with a purpose every day. And I also like to be challenged. And for the first time in a very long time, the Pudgy Penguins 
business is challenging um, because it's, it's so multifaceted. So, you know, being able to push myself and, but at its core, I think there's certain animals and people that I'm around that make me happy. But, you know, what, when I wake up every morning and I wake up in a good mood, why? It's because I have a purpose, I think, because I, I'm getting the day started to a greater purpose, I think would be the right answer to that. Yeah, no, it's that's beautiful, man. And I think like finding your why, why you're doing something. And that's that's such a good definition of purpose. Do you think that when you bought Pudgy Penguins, that was like a big shift in your life to really now have something that you're like, I'm going to fucking do this and, and really absolutely build this monster? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, it was it's the ultimate challenge for me. I don't think the, the businesses that I've done up until this point were incredibly tra challenging. Um, I mean, they were challenging, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think this is kind of like fulfills like my wants and desires as an entrepreneur. And when I achieve and accomplish what I want to achieve and accomplish here, I think I'm going to be extremely fulfilled. Let's go. Let's freaking go, dude. I absolutely love it. Listen, the second question is what is the biggest uh, or what is the happiest moment of your life so far? Uh, like retiring my mom would probably be the happiest moment. I think like the one that gives me the most consistent joy whenever I get into like a bad place, I just, you know, put my perspective shoes on and I kind of rewind. I think, uh, dude, life could have been so bad. Like for 20 years, my mom was living paycheck to paycheck at the end of every month. She would have nothing in her account. So being able to just be like, Hey, you know, she, she kind of, she kind of goes a little crazy with it, but like she travels all the time. She goes to like the best countries and stays at the best places. And that makes me happy. You know, at what, at some point, you know, before you can change the world, you have to change your family. I think a lot of people, you know, you know, mistake that, like, I can't change the world if I haven't changed the lives of my, my immediate family. Um, so I think being able to just change her life and give her a good life was probably the best thing I've done. Dude, that's so beautiful. What was it like, like coming from, you know, being homeless at one point to, to that for you? Was it just kind of like a surreal moment when you, when you achieve that? Yeah. So I, I, I do this thing and it, it's kind of unfortunate. I try not to get too high because I I'm very like, I understand my personality. So I try not to get too high in the winds so that I also try not to get too low on the lows. So I try to keep like this kind of like steady balance. So, you know, and I'm not one of those guys that like ever jumps for joy for anything. Like I'm never like, like Frank brought it up a couple, just, just cause you know, like, <clears> take, like, three podcasts, Frank brought it up a couple days ago. He's like, yo, why didn't you get happy when you broke all time highs? It's just not really my personality to like do that. Um, so it wasn't like it was, there was like a moment where like I cried of joy and I was like so happy cause I did something for my mom. I think it's just one of those like, like constant steady dopamine releases where it's like, okay, like whenever she texts me or sends me a picture, I'm just like, I smile and I feel good. Uh, but it wasn't like one culminating climax, like of a moment. It was just, it's been more of like a every day, every couple months, every couple weeks, like she'll send me something and I'll be like, yeah, I, I did what I needed to do. No, that's fucking awesome. I think, uh, I think having that baseline is a good thing, right? You can't, you can't get too, fired up but uh i think it is okay to show a little bit of enthusiasm uh sometimes in your life so uh but i do i do enjoy with that answer that you gave the last question under happiness is do you are you involved in any other communities maybe like that you've collected in the web3 space that you really enjoy you know and, and, I, and I say this in the kindest way possible but no and that's where i felt like we could fill a void like one of the voids that i felt like the web3 space had was like nobody was owning positivity and just like being good people like certain community members and certain communities would own that but nobody from a leadership perspective was owning that and like our whole ethos as a company is impacting people in a positive way i actually just sent a text message to the group we just posted an instagram video last night and there was a person who commented saying i mean i can read i can read it to you because i think it's pretty powerful uh but yeah, he basically absolutely. said he said, this page literally means the world to me. I can't express how much this page has elevated my mood and kept me from giving up and ending everything. Thank you. Yeah. That's like it. who, 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 in, who in web three is doing that? Nobody is the answer. 
uh, and from a, from a company standpoint, individuals, there's people like you, there's people like Moose, and you guys are champions and awesome. And it's my duty to try to empower you guys as much as possible. But from a company perspective, nobody's owning that. Nobody, and and, and that's, that's where I think we're ultimately just going to blow past everybody because I think it's just like, too bro culture, too like, just like insensitive, uh, you know, like, okay, we're cool, we're rich, you know what I mean? Like, and, and that's just not what life is about. I think just most people, you know, may, may have those phases in those in their life. But I think eventually you just always end up, as you get wise, older and wiser, you just come to the conclusion that it's like, dude, we're all going to die. Death is inevitable. I hate to get pessimistic, but it's true. It's our common denominator for everybody on this call and everybody listening and everybody who will listen for years or months to come. We we will all die, right? And so like where what's what's the what's the purpose? I mean, if we're all just if we're just walking dead people and and, and I've derived I thought about this question long and hard and I've actually derived that helping people and making the world a better place is your purpose in life because if that's not your purpose then what is? It's not you know, living the most crazy life for yourself. I mean, it's pointless if you're living your life for yourself because you're just going to die. Like you have to be living your life for other people. And, um, you know, I, I can say at a minimum, uh, Pudgy Penguins helps people every single day, whether you know it or not, I see it. Um, and that that's the most beautiful thing I think anybody can do, truthfully. Yes, let's go, baby. Oh my gosh, that, that comment was incredible. And uh, I think you're right, man. And I, one thing that you said um, the other day on the space as I was listening to you was the customer experience. You're very passionate about that. And I fucking love that um, because I work in customer service, man. And I think the lack of customer service in our world is so – it's so bad, like the customer service level. So I've been talking a lot about like if a company can come in and really – enhance the customer experience they're going to absolutely crush so when you said that i was just like dude he is just he knows and so uh and then you said i'm going to dominate everybody and i was like i'm riding with luca let's go dude so that was awesome dude it's um, awesome that you think it's awesome <laughs> let's go uh let's i'm gonna i'm gonna get you to smile a few times during this it's okay uh listen we're moving on to inspiration okay i gotta give you flowers you're absolutely crushing you're inspiring others you're leading a positivity monster, uh, you know, obviously I got to respect that because my, my mission is to make positivity louder. But the first question under inspiration is what is one lesson in your life that you've had to learn the hard way? Ooh, I've learned a couple <laughs> lessons the hard way. Um, the most impactful one for the users, I've said it multiple times, but, uh, you know, being, being comfortable is like the root of all evil, I think. I think depending on, on what you want to aspire to be in life, I think um, complacency is just like, it, it, it kills people and, and it, and it crushed, it crushed me and it, it didn't really crush me in the way that it took from me. It, it just minimized my potential. And I've had a couple opportunities in my life to really blow things out of the park. I actually, if like, if I were, you know, I'm not, I would never do this, but maybe one day I'll do like a five hour interview and I really just take like month by month. I have a pretty good memory, um, on just like certain things. Cause there's, there, there's, there's potential billion dollar businesses that I completely blew up on its face and then seeing what certain people are doing today. It's like, dude, I had those ideas and, and those plans and, but being complacent, you know, my business was interesting because for the longest time, you know, for 18 months, I would make a hundred, two hundred thousand $200,000 a day doing nothing. And so, and all I would do. And, and so that really was a problem because you just made so much money just basically doing nothing that you get complacent, you get comfortable when in reality, what, that was like the golden era of e-commerce where like, if I would have just like actually like turned it up and used that as like a motivator, I, I could have probably had like one of the craziest companies, you know, up until this point. And I just, I just missed it. I was young, I was immature, but I was complacent was really the core of the problem. And so complacency is, is, is key. Like, every day try to go for more. I think a lot of people's dreams are too small. Like I, I, I actually identified this early on, like why wouldn't your dream be to be the biggest, best, most successful, most impactful person? Cause at a minimum, like if your goal is to be, you know, a billionaire philanthropist and you fall and you only make it to 10% of that goal, where you're still worth, you know, a couple hundred million dollars and you can still be a philanthropist, right? So I think people would think just look too small uh, and dream too small and think too small. 
it's just think bigger, shoot for the stars. And if you land on the moon, then you're landing on the moon. hundred percent. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that, man. You gotta, you gotta go big, right? Like why would Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you dream the biggest, right? Why wouldn't you, you know, I, yeah, every, you know, that's fucking awesome, man. I can I love it. And complacency, you're right. Just kills. You got to just keep being hungry and want more to, to more impact. And so, um, what do you love about web three that inspires you to do it every day? Yeah. So to me at its core, it's a basic human right. So somebody told me this really early on uh, a couple of years ago when crypto was first blowing up. It's like to kind of convince me with the bull thesis behind crypto was, I think this was 2017. And he was like, you know, Luca, you don't remember this, but I'm 50 years old, but we used to pay to call people. Like it used to cost money to like call people. You don't remember yeah. this, but that, that was how life worked for a long time. And he was like, communication is a basic human right, the ability to communicate. And when you look at it at its core, how emails and text messages, like the communication business and its evolution was quite literally one of the most lucrative and biggest businesses uh, that has probably uh, happened over the last, you know, 25, 30 years, just that evolution of communication. And why it was so successful is because communication is a basic human right. Like I should be able to communicate between, you know, you and myself uh, for free. Like that just seems pretty obvious, right? I shouldn't have to pay for that because we're human. <laughs> the right to communicate. And so when you look at the, you know, when you look at Web3, I think Web3 embodies many human, basic human rights, right? The ability to transact freely, the ability to collect. And this is why I, I was so so frustrated at the royalty conversation. It's a basic human right. Like if I create something, it's a basic human right that I should be able to collect in perpetuity money on my creations. It's just like, like it's just like nonsense that anybody would think otherwise. Uh, neither here nor there. I think Web3 at its core encompasses, you know, a couple basic human rights. And we've seen as time has shown that when these basic human rights are given to humans and they're empowered with these rights that we evolve uh, at a lot quicker pace and communication i think is a testament to that the second we were able to communicate freely uh, our pace of innovation increased dramatically and so i think from my perspective it's really important to me that web3 wins at its core, like it's really important to me that Pudgy Penguins wins, but Pudgy Penguins can't win at the expense of Web3. It has to help Web3. It's like a core thing of mine. Like, I don't care. Like, it has to, it has to elevate this. And how I, and where I think our, we play our role is just by going after a category or a segment that nobody's going after. Nobody's going after the way that I'm looking at this stuff. Everybody's going after the same thing, like metaverses and play to earn games and tooling and like marketplaces with like utility that no one's asked for. Um, yeah. You know, my, my angle is like, how do you build an IP company that touches tens of millions of people? And how do you onboard them into web three? How do you onboard them to the blockchain? How do you show them uh, what digital ownership is about? What that means? How do you, you know, educate them? How do you create content that they love, that their families love? How do you create products? that invade the heart and mind and the home? And how do you just translate that all back to this world, right? How do you be the Trojan horse for the space in a very traditional way that has been done before, but I feel like a lot of Web3 people are not looking at because it's actually quite hard uh, in its traditional sense. So um, th that that's what I think pushes me and makes me get up every morning is the fact that like I'm playing a role in elevating what I believe the future of the internet is going to be, which I believe Web3 is that. I believe Web3 is the future, and I believe to accomplish and to get to the future that we all want it to be, um, somebody is going to have to do what I'm trying to do, and I believe we want to do it. <laughs> yeah, like what you're going to do, dude. That after, after hearing you speak, I'm, I'm in. I'm all in. Um, do you have anybody – this is kind of an interesting question because I don't, I don't think that you do, but do you have anybody that you've – like it may be an inspirational leader that's been throughout your life or someone you've looked to. It seems like you're, you're pretty good at like finding motivation within, but do you have anybody specific or maybe a few people you've, you've got inspiration from? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a ton. I think any, like any, like, I don't think people understand how hard it is to build a really big business and to be a founder. Like to me, I look at any founder that's built a nine figure business and like, 
I look at them as like LeBron. I look at them as like cooler than LeBron James to me. Like to me, it's just so much harder. Like it's quite literally the ultimate, the ultimate Olympics. Like I get like physical attributes and stuff, but a physical game is, is very like straightforward, right? Like there's, there's like five things that you need to do. Like there's so many variables and mental challenges that come into being like a high level entrepreneur and so many balances. I mean, like it's just so more multifaceted and there's so many more variables that will determine the failure or the success. And so like, I think just anybody that I think has been a successful founder or somebody I respect and, you know, somebody that I, I like, my thing is, is I got my education listening to Harvard, Berkeley, uh, Stanford, um, you know, John Hopkins. Like I listened to all their alums speak. That was how I got my education for three years. I would literally for hours a day, just listen to just alum take speeches to the hall, like, and, and teach to the class. And so like, all those guys were impactful in some capacity. I, I forget who it was exactly, but the, the advice that changed my life was stop comparing your life to others, stop feeling sorry for yourself and take accountability. And I remember this, 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 I forget who it was. I wish I did. Uh, but I remember this moment. I was 16 when I watched that YouTube video because I hated my life. I blamed my mom for the life that I lived and I was old enough to get a job and I wasn't fucking working. And so I just, the second I heard that, because one, I was depressed because I was comparing my life to all of my rich friends. So I was like, duh, obviously you're gonna be depressed in this shitty ass house, comparing your life to all your rich friends with all the nice houses. <laughs> Two, I was like, so am I just gonna sit here and cry about it all day? Or am I gonna get up and get to fucking work? And so I like realized, okay, that, and and I just took accountability. And, and it was that moment, literally the next day I wake up I tell my mom, I'm like, hey, by the way, I'm leaving school. I'm just letting you know. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. I actually, I actually talked to her about this, and, and she was actually freaking out. She told me, she like, but she was like, what am I going to do? Um, so I go to my dean. I'm like, hey, I'm out of here. I was like, how do I get out of here and look the best and like in the best way possible? <laughs> yeah, she was like, take this test called the Chespi. And I was like, all right, I'll take it. I passed it. I studied it for a couple of weeks, passed it, and then I was out. Um, and, and that was the beginning of, of this journey. And, but it was those three points that, that were like, I'm so thankful for. And I encourage anyone listening that like, once you're 16 years old and you live in America, I can't speak for somebody outside of the country. Cause I know there's variables that I'm just not aware of, but if you're 16 in America, that's it, dude, it's on you. I love it, dude. Yes. I think the best thing is accountability, man. You watched the video and you didn't like wait for two weeks. Like you went next day. You went next day. You got after it. Like, you know, you can have the thing with the dreams that you were talking about. is like, you can have the craziest dreams, right? If you don't do anything about it, don't matter. And so like going and doing it, I like can't amplify that enough. Just get out there and start working, start getting after it. So holy moly, dude, that was incredible. Uh, you're an absolute goat. Um, what is your, is your favorite inspirational movie is my last question, but is it into the wild or do you have another one? It'd probably be into the wild. I mean that, I mean, if you were to ask me in my perfect world, in a world where my family was taken care of, and maybe I don't know the things that I know, and I don't feel like I have to, for the sake of the world, try to help people. And I was, cause, cause it's a very selfish approach, I think definitely like just being like, Hey, I'm going to go into the wild and like live off of nature because that's what I want to do. Like at some point, I think you have to be selfless. Uh, but like, if I was like a selfish individual and I was like, I would totally do it. I mean like that, that I will do it eventually. I think like, not in like just forever, but like catch me three months with a backpack and, and, my car <laughs> and on a, you know, hitchhiking. Like, why wouldn't I do that? I would love to do that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny is uh, I did K money. I had K money on and he was like, I love fishing. And I was like, dude, I love fishing. I love camping. I was like, dude, 2023 fishing camping trip so i mean like luke you might have to come along like it's happening yeah. it's written down in my in my journal i read every day like we're doing it i don't know if i'm organizing it but we're like we need to do that a camping trip did you oh my gosh frank luca k money joey like i don't even know i don't know that would be the best moments of our life okay listen let's move into positivity um, you know, I'm obviously on a mission to make positivity louder. And after this conversation, I think Luca, you're on a mission to make positivity louder. So I absolutely love it, man. Um, and on this segment, we just talk about positive mindset. 
and to the core positive mindset, the definition is to focus on the good in everything, right? And so there's bad shit that happens all the time, but you can always find the good in every situation. So can you talk to the people listening about, you know, how positive mindset has affected you in your life and how, and what it means to you? Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where life will suck one day and it's all about perspective. I mean, perspective and gratitude is the key to happiness. Truly. Like if you, if you've mastered the skill of gratitude, you'll never be unhappy. Right. It's like, it's a very simple cheat code, easier said than done. Don't get me wrong because I have not mastered the skill of gratitude and, and these are skills and they take mastering. Right. And so you need at least 10,000 hours, or at least that's the rule. Right. Um, of just of mastering a certain emotion or a skill. And, and I think gratitude is quite literally a skill. Um, and, but perspective and gratitude will change your life. Like I'll wake up one morning and I do this all the time because I'm, I'm like, I'm human and I'll, and I'll be upset and I'll be like, damn, life is hard and I'll feel bad for myself. I'll get into a little rut. And then I, the part of the mastery is I try to train myself to just br pull the, pull the perspective out of me and just be like, dude, if you guys really saw pictures of me eight years ago, there was no chance you would think that I would be the person I am today. Like my life could have, should have went wrong a hundred times over. Like I should not be here. Like I'm 24 years old and I am blessed, dude. Like I'm able to take care of my mom. I have homes in multiple parts of the country. Like what the hell am I upset about? <laughs> you know? uh, though, like I, 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 I push myself like, right. And like, there's things that like, I'll still, I'll still catch myself comparing and I'll see like kids crushing it. I'll be like, damn, you know, like Zuck had it. It was a billionaire at 24. Like, what am I doing? Uh, so I'll get caught into that rat race, but like, dude, realistically, yeah. like gratitude is key. Uh, yeah. it, the key to the positive mindset, because if you have gratitude, true gratitude, even if you have nothing, even if you're listening to this right now and you're dirt poor, like, do you have two, two, two hands, two feet, right? Yeah. Does your brain work? Do you, are you sick? Yep. You know what I mean? Cause it's like the only time. And then it's like, even if you're, even if you, the, you know, I say this, it sounds like a little pessimistic, but it's true. Like no matter how hard your, you think your life is one, somebody has a harder life and two, your life can get worse. So be grateful that it isn't right. Because like it can get worse, dude. Like, and I, and like, I, I used to think of this all the time, even when I thought I was like terminally sick and I had a bunch of issues. I was like, well, I could, I could be like, really t way worse like in this situation yeah. so i think just having perspective and being grateful and i think at its core no matter about what your financial situation or any of the above being healthy it, it, because the health scares will switch everything like like i had a really bad health scare once my life went about business and pushing my brand forward and you know being a great entrepreneur to 24 hours later i could give zero fucks about my business I could give zero shits about it because right now my life is on the verge of, you know, being flipped upside down because of health. So that at a minimum, if you're listening to this uh, and your financial situation is not where you want it to be, that's fine. Because as long as you have this, <laughs> that's the greatest blessing. That's something that money cannot buy. So. No, dude, I love it, man. And, and I think if you're not the seventh billion person in the world, like they got it way harder than us. And, you know, my life kind of changed probably about nine years ago. I heard a Gary V video and it was the chances of being born are 400 trillion to one. And for me, that was like the unlock. I was like, dude, I, I can't even complain. Like I'm so grateful to just be alive. And like what you said about the hands and the feet. And I think something that I've developed with just the practice of gratitude, like I've been doing it for so long now, like writing in journals every single day, but what I'm grateful for doing my videos, like the opportunity, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to, to wake up in the morning, to, to be able to be there for my kids, to have this like opportunity with you to, to learn from people like that, like love for that, that, and the gratitude for that is like really elevated my life. So I, I love what you said there. And I think like, yeah, like the fact that we get to wake up every morning is, is what it comes down to. And so you lean into gratitude. It really will change your life. Um, yeah. Let's I, get uh, into yeah, no, I was going to say, I, I lead into a prayer every night and every morning. And the first thing I say, the first thing that starts off the prayer is, Thank you, God, for letting me wake up today. Um, yep. And thank you, God, for letting me sleep tonight. That's it, dude. If you, yep, just say, yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me wake up. Like that's, yeah, when I wake up, I'm, I do, I do the same thing. I literally say thank you. 
uh, for letting me wake up. Thank you for my wife and my kids. And then I, I get into three things I'm grateful for that moment. Um, and then I get two things that I'm excited for, for the day. And it's just like, man, like it just elevate your life. So, uh, I love that. Let's get into enthusiasm. This is my jam. I'm a pretty enthusiastic guy. Uh, I love it. Uh, you know, I can't wait till my son is playing sports and I can just absolutely lose my mind at a sporting event uh, and watch just everybody around me just be like, who the fuck is this guy? And I'm just going to be absolutely screaming. So it's something I'm, I'm waiting for. I do it every day. Uh, give me three things in your life right now that you can't get enough of. Pudgy penguins. <laughs> pudgy penguins and pudgy penguins. I can't get enough pudgy penguins, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I love it. I, love I quite it. literally uh, can't get enough. I need more ETH. I have like a little wallet. People don't know about. <laughs> them. Let's go. Let's go. How many, how many penguins do you have? Um, I don't know, actually. I just have so many like scattered <laughs> things around. I know I have like five wallets, like two, like I need to like, I need, I'll actually count it. I'll, I'm so thankful. It's like the first time that I'm gonna like, I'm actually looking forward to a break because I just totally need like five days to just sit in my bed and just like be on the computer and just not stress about meetings or any of the above. Um, and so like, I like, I, I like, I've been starting to buy NFTs again. Like people know, I, I mean, on my main account, I'll do it. But like, I've been like really starting to swoop up some NFTs because I actually know like who's like really good now. Like I have that, like, I'm like, oh yeah, I know who to believe in and who's just like a complete like fraudster, <laughs> like, not good. <laughs> Um, so I'm like buying the things that I like. So I, I'll, I'll count them and I'll let you know. I'll shoot you a message. Let's go. Listen, dude, it's funny. I told, I just telling the Joey this, but penguins are my favorite animal. They've been my favorite animal since I was like four years old. Mm. Um, and my goal is to buy a rock hopper for sure. I don't know what the floor is on those, but that is going to happen regardless. Like, I don't care when it happens. It's happening because those have been my favorite penguins since I was like four years old. So we're absolutely riding. It's only a matter of time. Um, what, what has been your most exciting moment in web three? Ah, you know, speaking from just as a consumer, not as a founder or I keep saying founder, but as an owner, <laughs> I'll just be honest, dude. Like when ape, when, when the board apes just gave me the ape coin, I actually like, it was the first time I like yelped. I was like, I had no idea. I like, I just had stopped paying attention. Um, cause I got like, I was obsessed for six months and I was like, okay, this is a real problem. And gel blaster was really skyrocketing. So I was like, okay, I need to focus on gel blaster. Cause it's like, I just made six months of gel blaster about NFTs. Um, <laughs> like I stopped and then, and then I saw the eight coin and I like went into my wallet and I was like, bro, like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is great. This is, this is phenomenal. This is amazing. Like yeah, yeah. whatever, whatever you get, like, that's why, like, dude, the, the best, the best thing Yuga Labs has done, like Yuga Labs just literally just gave value back to their holders. And, and in that respect, that's how I look at the Pudgies is like, I want to give all of my holders the same feeling that Yuga gave me that day. I was like, dude, and they've given me that feeling multiple times now, but like that one was really the one where I was like, yeah, God, God, <laughs> God you're on me when, whenever we connect. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, I mean that was crazy on the timeline that day. Like I remember just waking up. It was like I was at home for some reason. I don't know if it's a weekday or a weekend, but like I just looked at my wife and I was like, Yeah, these people that I know just got hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like I remember one of my guys that I, I love, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but he got like four hundred thousand dollars. I was just like I was even jealous. I was literally just so excited. I was like, I'm so yeah, fucking for excited sure. for these people. Like, why would like it was just so awesome? What an awesome event! Uh, like in in the space of I don't think any of us will ever forget that we're here. Um, fucking okay. awesome, dude. Let's go, dude. Absolutely love it. Um, let's move into. Oh shit! I don't know what I just did. We're back. We're back. Sorry. All right, listen. We go into dreams. Oh, I, that's not good. We're right here, baby. We're right here. Okay. This is my favorite question, Luca. So under dreams, we've already touched on it a little bit. Dream big, okay? But what I'm going to ask you is the dream that you have for your life, okay? I'm going to read to you my dream that I have for my life, and then I'm going to have you say your dream. So I'm Gentle Tornado. I am an honest, enthusiastic, and successful man that will inspire others to live their life through happiness. I love that. Thanks. Thank uh, you. I'm uh, I'm Luca Nets, and my dream is to be one of the world's greatest entrepreneurs 
uh, greatest savior of animals, because I'm a huge advocate to be a voice for the voiceless, and to make all of my pudgy penguins holders extremely ecstatic. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Absolute legend, dude. Absolutely legendary. All right, listen, I'm going to share my screen. I know this is going to mean something to you. It's my favorite poem of all time. Okay. It means the absolute world to me. It's called The Dash. It says, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the death dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? I love that, dude. Let's freaking go, dude. Let's freaking go. <laughs> oh, listen, this has been an absolute pleasure, but how we end it is you get to leave the audience with one final statement. It could be literally whatever you want. And then one final question you get to ask the audience. I asked the audience a question? Yep. Like a rhetorical question or? No, yeah, no, they're going to answer it. I mean, sometimes I get answers. I probably will for you. Um, yeah. Damn, a question for the audience. You're really switching it up on me today. <laughs> um, and dude, actually meeting you in person, I'm like, dude, you're kind of a gentle tornado. That's like, <laughs> I get it now. I was like, because you've got so much energy, like a tornado, but you're like a kind tornado. Appreciate it. Appreciate there you it. go. Um, what's the question for the audience? Um, well, what, what do you love most about Pudgy Penguins? How about that? And then my statement before I leave uh, would be go out and crush today. Last day before we take the break, right? I mean, I think we're all going on a break. I would hope everyone's going on a break from today on. So like bang today out, crush it. Like absolutely just go insanely hard. Let's go, dude. I'm about to hit 10K followers. Like today's going to be absolutely legendary, rolling into Christmas. Like my kids are going to just absolutely have the time of their lives. So let's freaking go. Listen, this has been Hyped Happy Hour, episode 38 with Luke and Nets. He's an absolute fucking awesome person, dude. I don't know what to say. You're such a fucking gangster. Let's go, dude. We're absolutely riding. Pudgy penguins to the fucking moon. Positivity to the moon. Can't stop, won't stop. Live hyped. Follow your boy. Follow me on YouTube, like, subscribe, share this with anybody that you think could get value. Peace.